Welcome. As it described in the film about feedstocks and their characteristics, lignocellulosic biomass, such as wood, contains cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. So it is an interesting feedstock to obtain monosaccharides from the polysaccharides and aromatic compounds from the lignin. Using these, you can then do further conversions to make a variety of value-added products. But you may be asking yourself, why are pretreatments required? Lignocellulosic materials consist of bundles of cellulose interlaced with hemicellulose and lignin to form a tight knit insoluble material. This makes it very difficult to hydrolyze the glycosidic bonds of cellulose to glucose. The most important factors that hinder the use of lignocellulose as a fermentable sugar feedstock are the cellulose crystallinity, the particle size, and lignin and hemicellulose hamper the access of enzymes to the cellulose structure for the hydrolysis. To alter these factors, a pretreatment is required. This can be mechanical, but also thermochemical. There are several general strategies that can be applied. Reduce the crystallinity or particle size, or remove hemicelluloses and lignin from the matrix. The reduction in crystallinity and particle size can be achieved by mechanical processes, such as milling. How effective this pretreatment is on the hydrolysis of the polysaccharides can be influenced by the type of milling and its duration, for example. Alternatively, to remove hemicelluloses and lignin requires thermochemical processes that use chemicals such as water, acid or alkali. A simple thermal treatment involves heating the lignocellulose material in the presence of water to temperatures of around about 180 degrees Celsius. Hemicellulose starts to degrade to form organic acids and this catalyzes further hydrolysis of the hemicellulose. These conditions also result in partial solubilization of the lignin. Thus, both hemicellulose and lignin are removed from the cellulosic structure and into the water. But such thermochemical treatments lead to further undesired reactions. An example is the acid-catalyzed dehydration of monosaccharides to furanic compounds and the formation of small phenolic compounds. This can give rise to problems. The presence of these compounds leads to inhibitory effects in a subsequent bioconversion process and should either be removed or better still, avoid making them altogether. In order to overcome some of these issues, a steam explosion pretreatment can be applied. Here, rapid application of steam is used. High pressure steam is added to the reactor and after a few minutes, the pressure is released and the biomass cooled. This method aims at a fast solubilization of the hemicellulose. However, we still see hemicellulose hydrolysis and the formation of organic acids. The effectiveness can be affected by a number of factors. For example, the moisture content. This affects the heating time and therefore further reactions that you don't want. Even the use of hot water under mild acidic conditions can be considered. The hemicellulose is partially hydrolyzed, increasing solubilization, while minimizing the formation of monosaccharides that can further react to form inhibitors. Under certain conditions, lignin may also be partially solubilized using this approach. The use of acids aims at solubilizing hemicellulose and lignin. Under acidic conditions, the hemicellulose can be partially hydrolyzed and solubilized. Lignin can be solubilized, but this can further react and precipitate. There are a large number of potential processes. They vary in reaction time, temperature, acid concentration, as well as the type of acid. For example, mineral acids, such as uh, sulfuric acid or organic acid, such as malic acid, can be used. 
This approach can lead to high levels of removal of hemicellulose. Nevertheless, depending on the severity of the conditions, undesired acid-catalyzed reactions of monosaccharides to furanic compounds can also take place. The mode of action of the alkaline pretreatment involves partial solvation of lignin from the matrix, therefore exposing the cellulose structure. During the pretreatment, the material can swell and this leads to changes in the cellulose structure. Another alkaline pretreatment is ammonia fibre expansion or affix. Here liquid ammonia is added to the biomass reactor. After a pretreatment at a moderate pressure and temperature, the pressure is released. This process is able to remove both lignin and affect the crystallinity of the cellulose and has been shown to lead to a significant increase in the enzymatic hydrolysis of cellulose to glucose. Sometimes mechanical and thermochemical treatments are required. For instance, if green feedstocks are used, for example, verge grass, a mechanical pretreatment such as pressing can lead to dewatering. A liquid and a solid fraction are obtained. The liquid fraction contains dissolved protein, minerals and monosaccharides. Heating this allows proteins to coagulate and it can be isolated. The solid fraction contains some insoluble protein and lignocellulosic material. More protein can be extracted under mild alkali pH conditions. The remaining solid could be used as a source of lignocellulose. Similarly, if lipid feedstocks are used, a meal containing protein and lignocellulose remains after removing the lipid. This meal can also be used as a source of lignocellulose.